my name is James Lester and welcome to this beginner tutorial on setting up a global variable inside of Unity. To start this tutorial I've made a simple 2D scene, I've added a level manager and I've added a storage sprite. Both of these are simple sprites which I made in Photoshop and put into the game, they're 64 by 64. Usually when we develop a level manager we do right click and then create empty because it holds no values other than transform information which makes it relatively easy for us to add code to without kind of fragging the game and you know making it lag for our gameplay due to this tiny bit of extra information which we don't really need so to begin developing a global variable we're going to go create c sharp script and we're going to name this global variable storage and we're going to go to our level manager and add global variable storage onto the script if we double click this it will open inside of visual studio or mono mono design i think it's called I can't really remember, I haven't used it in a while, but either way, go to Visual Studio, it's really nice. So let's set up a public variable first of all. So as a beginner to set up a public variable, we're going to do an integer, so we're going to write public integer, and then we can do this in camel case, global variable, semicolon. So what we've done here, let's reset set up a comment. Set a global variable to store integer value. So commenting is very key throughout development and it's something you should do if you want to actively uh, progress yourself and have your code be easy to understand. So at the beginning of the game, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this to zero. So we're saying our global variable at the start of gameplay is set to zero. Afterwards, if we double click here again and copy and paste the code into update, we're going to have global variable plus plus semicolon. So what this means is it's a very simple code so far. If we hit save, we've set up a public global variable, which if we go back to here, we'll be able to click onto the level manager and we're going to be able to see it in the inspector there for us to edit. Go up. So global variable is equal to zero on the very start of gameplay. So when we run the game, every frame from that point onwards, add one to global variable. So if your game is running at 30 frames a second, you're going to add 30 frames every second. If it's running 60, it'll be adding 60. Very simple stuff. But at this point, this is a class-based variable, meaning every instance of this level manager, which we place throughout the game, will have its own instance of global variable. And that's not what we want. We only want this variable to be in one, one version of it throughout the entire, entire sort of gameplay session. So all we have to do to fix this is go static, which then in turns means there can only ever be one variable named that name in a static space. Uh, this also means that other codes can really easily access this code. So if we hit save and go back to the inspector, you should see that the public global variable there is now invisible because it's static. We can no longer access it in the inspector because that would be ridiculous. Um, for some reason we have two codes of that on there. So if we remove one, I don't know why two went on, but whatever. So now let's set a debug log just so we can visually see what it is. So debug dot log open semicolon to shut and if we go like this we're going to write global variable is equal to plus global variable and what that does is it's a debug log which means it's going to log every single frame the name global variable as a string and then the global variable value. So if we hit play now, I can visually show you it. So play, it will take us to the game mode. And at the bottom here, you can clearly see the value going up every single frame. So very simple code, very easy to understand. So we hit play there and go back. So now we set up our global variable, which we can visually see in the debugger, which is fine. But now we want to be able to access that global variable. So let's create a new script, which is going to go onto our storage. Uh, game object. So C sharp global variable callback. So that I, I'm going to completely ignore that I accidentally had cap blocks on. That is completely fine. <laughs> All right. So now let's set a new variable. So public int call to call to global depending on your team it's sometimes easier 
to do it in camel case uh, because if that's what they've been using for many years it's easier to integrate into the team by going into camel case i genuinely speaking do that because it's easier for me to understand and read but in this example we are going to keep it camel case just for uh, you know make, making it easier as a whole um, in this instance we're not going to need a start variable because we're not setting it this variable is simply used to call to our global static variable and access it so what we're going to write is global variable as a call to global is equal to and now we're going to go to our other scripts we're going to call to our other script we're going to write global variable storage we'll see it come up dot and then we're going to go into here get global variable go like that and semicolon so all that's done is we've set a public variable and in our update every single frame we're calling to the global variable storage script which is that one and we are accessing the global variable value it's as simple as that so now let's do another debug log just above this one debug.log open that put the semicolon at the end add a string so we can see what it's called so call to global is equal to call to global so this is just going to let us get another visual representation of the script once again so if we go back go to our storage level manager and add the <laughs> global algorithm yep that's the one if we add that in there we'll be able to see it publicly inside of the inspector and when we hit run and open this code we'll see if we just pause it so we stop that we can clearly see call to global is using the global variable every single frame so what, what is the overall use of a level manager is to develop global variables which we can call to throughout gameplay without having to set individual instances on, uh, of them on every single object so for example a a variable which you would want in an instance is the death of an enemy but a variable which you wouldn't want on an instance for example your player is an ability which you've unlocked so that, that's the basic way of setting up a global variable and accessing it very simply um, this is the the most basic form of code on what you would use this for but I, I think it's a very good example of just translating one integer value and one uh, global variable throughout your gameplay to another very simple value which at this point has no meaning but we, you could very simply have it equal a vector 2 and have that affect the translation of your object throughout the game world and stuff like that so yeah very good very easy code so this was my tutorial on how to develop a global variable a global static variable which can be called throughout gameplay by any other object inside of the game world um, I'm hoping I explained it in the simplest way possible and I didn't rush through anything. But if you do have any questions on the use of a global variable, please feel free to write in the comments below and I'll get to them as quickly as possible. Um, obviously, this is a very simple example of where you'd use a global variable, but it's, I think it's a very key example in terms of it shows the very basic functionality of use. And from this point, you can now develop yourself onwards and visually see you'll make the connections of okay so what would i use a global variable for um this tutorial also went over the very basics of the use of a level manager which is obviously where you're going to store your global variables and it also went over how please never use caps lock completely by accident when setting a script score or else you get this in your inspector which is an absolute state all right so thank you very much for watching Speak to you next week on my next video, which is going to cover 2D platforming logic and the very basics of setting up a rigid body and movement. Thank you. Goodbye.